Hello everyone, in this video I'd like to talk about ChatOps and why it is such an interesting concept. I will also show how to use it in practice by integrating one of the chatbot implementations which is Airbot with Slack. Alright, so what is ChatOps? ChatOps is actually a flow of interactions that starts with Ops team that is using chat applications to make some decisions and discuss the operation. And on the other hand, there is a chatbot that is listening to those conversations and just executing the orders on the infrastructure. Now, why the chatbot part is so important? Well, the interactions between team members still happens, but they are less structured and often team members just talk to one another and uh, it's not always seen to all the team members. Often the actions on the infrastructure are executed directly by the people and not always by the same people so different parts are changed by different people so it's hard to just follow what was really done on the environment and that's where often problem arises so if we think about key benefits that chatops is bringing to us the first one would be the transparency so uh, there's no like hidden actions uh, somebody doing something and uh, you know telling others after a couple of days that uh, he or she did it everything is uh, clear everything is uh, almost reviewed uh, as in pair programming it's clear what is done what was done and uh, all the team members are deciding what will be done uh, it's also perfect uh, way of uh, providing visibility especially for the newcomers they can just jump into the channel and see how the business is done, uh, what are the operations executed, he can see what tools are used and so on. And lastly, it just promotes the higher level of automation, right? So it's not only that the, uh, the, there are scripts, there is automation that does something. It's also structured in the way that everybody can use it just by typing some command in a chat application. Okay, so let's see uh, all those things in action. I will first install the Airbot in on my machine in virtual env. So first I will create the virtual env itself. And then install the Airbot with uh, Slack backend. It will take a second to install all the packages, but we should be set up by now. So first we need to initialize the airbot. It will create some basic uh, files structure uh, so that we are ready to just launch it. And now we can just uh, try the help command to see all the available actions. And it turns out that the Airbot boilerplate comes with first plugin called example and it has also the first command try me that you can just execute to see how it's working. So let's do it now. And it returns the, uh, the response as expected. We can now view the plugin code just to see how how the basic plugin looks like. And as you can see, this is simply a Python class uh, with the name of function matching the command name. And this is the returned response. So now we know that everything works locally, uh, why not just integrate it with Slack then? I already created the uh, Slack workspace and I have some channels here. Uh, so what we need to do now is to create the Slack app that will represent uh, our bot. There are two types of applications that you can create in Slack currently. Uh, the first one is like so-called new app, which is uh, based on post webhooks 
uh, and there is a classic app that uh, simply uh, starts the uh, WebSocket connection to, to the Slack uh, so that the information is uh, exchanged via the socket. And this is what uh, I will be using now. Uh, it's easier to use because we don't need to have exposed service uh, to the outside world so that Slack can just send the events to, to the service. We can just run it as a local service and it will uh, just communicate with Slack using uh, WebSocket. So what is important is to, to not use the new Slack application but uh, use this new classic app uh, parameter in the URL. Uh, which will then redirect to to the form for creating uh, actually classic app. And here we just add the app name and uh, select the workspace. I will just point to the workspace that I already have. And just create the app. Now what we need to do is to attach a bot to this application and uh, we need to give it some permissions. In this particular case it will be added uh, by default so we just define the uh, bot name and uh, username for this bot. And it will be created with uh, some uh, predefined permissions to just talk to the uh, other users and so on. You can configure it in different manner if you want, but for our demo it should be enough. And having all of this we can now install up to our workspace which we just deploy it on, on our workspace and make it available. Uh, it will also generate the tokens uh, which we will then use in Airbot to connect to Slack. Now you can see that there is a new, a new application under apps and this will represent our chatbot but we need to still do some configuration on, on the Airbot side. Airbot is configured using config.py file uh, which holds the static configuration uh, for everything that is uh, done by Airbot. So what we need to change is to first switch backend to Slack and then we need to pass the token that will uh, authenticate uh, our site to the Slack application. So first we need to copy the bot user access token and just paste it uh, as a bot identity. And also it's uh, good to change the bot admin uh, because some of the actions can be done only by bot admins. So this will be just my username on Slack. And then we save it and we can run our bot once again. And this time it will connect to the Slack application. And everything seems fine, so we can now switch to Slack. And as you can see, our application is now green and connected. And we can try to execute the same try me command to the uh, airbot, but via Slack. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. We can also switch to channel and just invite the um, chatbot to, to this channel by just mentioning him.
and clicking invite. And it automatically accepts the invitation and it's just attached to this channel. So we can now once again try to execute try me. I think the bear try me should work without mentioning. Yeah. What is also nice about Airbot is that it's uh, it's it has rich logging, so we can follow what what is done here. As you can see, there are different uh, events uh, coming to the uh, chatbot. You can see how Airbot is uh, analyzing all the uh, upcoming messages. Yeah, and maybe you can think of some extra usage of some events that are coming from Slack. Next thing we can do is to use some external plugin because this is how the Airbot actions and uh, commands are packaged. Uh, you can create your own plugin and dynamically uh, use it in your chatbot. Uh, and I already prepared uh, such a plugin. So first we need to create repos JSON file, which is like the base of repositories that are allowed to be integrated on your chatbot. And it's like the metadata description that points to your GitHub repository. And in my case, it will be those chatops airbot uh, repository that I already created. It contains uh, three files. Uh, we'll go through them later. It's just a Python code that will be loaded dynamically. So let's save the file now. And we also need a change in config.py just to point to the uh, our new file containing the uh, configuration of repos. By default, it's using um, repos JSON from Airbot.io, which is a place where uh, Airbot maintainers are placing some official plugins that you can use. But in our case, it will be our internal plugin. So we need to put this bot plugin indexes and just save the file. Then we are just running Airbot once again to grab the changes. And in Slack, we need to now load this plugin using repos command. This should be done as direct message to chatbot and by bot admin. So not anybody can do it. Uh, so first we need to do uh, repo install. And as you can see, the repo is being loaded. And if you go to the um, login, you can see that uh, the repo was cloned and the requirements that was uh, in this repo are being applied. So basically PIP is uh, adding all the packages uh, so that uh, all the dependencies are set. Now, if you execute help command, we can see there are a bunch of new actions available in the DOS plugin we just added. And this is just a simple plugin that uh, allows creating some services on your local machine. I made it very simple uh, just to show you how it might work. The Docker is running on my machine and just starting services on localhost, so it's not very practical. Uh, but it nicely shows what is the power of, of having a chatbot in place. So let's first start web service, which is just a, a Nginx. And our chatbot just said that the service is started on following URL and we can check it that everything is working fine. We can also list all the services that are started. So there is some persistency on the chatbot side. I will explain it later. And then we can start another service. Uh, this time it will be Jenkins. Uh, 
and again everything works fine. And we can see that the service was added to the list. What we can do more is view the docker logs for the Jenkins service. As you can see it's also showing everything. It's possible to also send files using Airbot. So uh, there are quite many options what the chatbot can provide. So let's now clear all the things and just stop the services using docker kill command. And as you can see, Jenkins service is not available anymore. Last thing I wanted to show you is just the walk through the those chatops uh, Airbot plugin, and just to show you how such a simple plugin looks in code. So there is a plug file which describes like some basic metadata about the plugin. And then there is a Python file describing all the actions that can be used in plugin and they are defined as uh, functions with arguments. And arguments are passed uh, in arc parse style so we can define different flags and uh, parameters such as some true-false flags in this case. And the functions are returning the responses on the chat. So whatever you define here will be uh, responded on the chat application. Also, there is this um, persistency. Uh, you can save some values between the executions of uh, commands. And this is basically done by using uh, dictionary uh, on the self object and by assigning this this object uh, the value is saved and it can be used uh, between different functions and last thing is are the requirements uh, you just put whatever dependencies your plugin needs and it will be uh, installed by Airbot on loading the plugin which is very convenient thanks for watching as always you can find all the materials on my github